A meniscus is one of the most important structures inside your knee, but many patients don't realise how vital a meniscus is for their knee health. It's the true unsung hero of your knee. Unfortunately, a meniscus is also very fragile and meniscal tears are common injuries. In fact, a meniscal tear is one of the most common conditions that I see and treat. The best treatment for a meniscal tear varies hugely between one patient and the next. Now treatment depends upon your age, the type of meniscal tear, your health history, and whether or not you also have arthritis within your knee. To fully understand what a meniscus actually does, I need to explain some basic concepts. In a normal knee bone, the end of the thigh bone or femur and top of the shin bone or tibia are covered in a smooth, spongy substance called articular cartilage. Now inside a living knee joint, it looks beautifully smooth and white. It's actually quite soft and spongy when a surgeon touches it with a probe. Articular cartilage creates a smooth surface that enables your joints to glide. If you didn't have articular cartilage, you would literally have bone grinding on bone. It also acts like a cushion protecting the bone beneath. Now a meniscus is shaped like a horseshoe and it sits in between the articular cartilage of the thigh bone and shin bone. There are two of these inside your knee, one on the outer side called the lateral meniscus and one on the inner side called the medial meniscus. Now a meniscus is made from a rubbery type of cartilage called fibrocartilage. Unlike the articular cartilage that is firmly attached to the thigh and shin bone, a meniscus is a lot more mobile within your joint. Incredibly, a meniscus absorbs 70 to 90% of the force that goes through your knee joint. It also plays an important role in stabilising your knee. Without a meniscus, the articular cartilage is exposed to more shock than it can cope with, and it becomes arthritic. So the meniscus really is the best friend of the articular cartilage. So think of somebody bouncing up and down on a trampoline. The mat of the trampoline is acting just like a meniscus. It is absorbing the shock as you land, preventing your body from taking all the force. Now imagine the mat of that trampoline tearing, and now it can't absorb the force anymore. A meniscus is exactly the same. As soon as it tears, it can no longer protect the articular cartilage. The cartilage then begins to gradually wear away. A loss of articular cartilage is the crucial first step in the development of arthritis. Without the smooth gliding and cushioning from the articular cartilage, the bone beneath becomes bruised, swollen and painful. Now most people tend to think of bone as being dry and lifeless, like a skeleton in a museum. However, inside your body, bone is very much alive. It's full of blood and it bleeds when it becomes bruised. Your bones also have a rich nerve supply, and that's why arthritis can be very painful. Now arthritis, in itself, is quite a complex topic. If you'd like to learn more, then have a look at the specific arthritis video that is also on my website. We tend to think of arthritis as only occurring in elderly people. However, it's not uncommon for me to see arthritis in a younger patient's knee after a meniscal injury and some of these patients are only school aged. So this shows you just how important a meniscus is for your knee health. If you have a meniscal injury early in your life, then your knee has to function without shock absorption for a longer period of time. Younger patients are also more active and put their knee through more stress. A meniscal tear for a teenager could be a life-changing injury, whereas the same meniscal tear for a 60-year-old would not be anywhere near as problematic. There are two main types of meniscal injuries. Acute meniscal tears that occur in younger patients with an otherwise healthy knee, and degenerative meniscal tears that occur in older patients with some knee arthritis. Each of these meniscal tears has a very different treatment pathway. If you only want to learn about the type of meniscal tear that applies to your knee, you'll find a separate video about each of them on my website. Otherwise, I'll describe both types now. Acute meniscal tears can occur in patients of any age group, but they are most common in younger patients. They can occur with a significant sporting injury, or even quite innocuously, like twisting your knee when getting out of a chair. 
Symptoms of an acute meniscal tear include sudden pain, swelling, and also a feeling of catching within the joint. If the meniscal tear is severe, it can also displace. And this is sometimes called a bucket handle tear on an MRI report. This can lock your knee, stopping it from bending and straightening fully. If you have symptoms of an acute meniscal tear and a previously normal knee, then you should make an appointment with your GP or sports doctor promptly. Your doctor may start with an x-ray and sometimes even a period of observation if they don't suspect a meniscal tear. If they are suspicious of a meniscal tear or you don't improve with time, it's likely they will consider ordering an MRI scan. A meniscal tear and other ligament injuries will not show on an x-ray or ultrasound. All growing athletes with an acute knee injury associated with pain, swelling or symptoms of clicking and catching should have an MRI scan as soon as possible. In growing athletes, it is also important to have an x-ray prior to the MRI scan to exclude a fracture or growth plate injury. A meniscus has a very poor blood supply and therefore has a very limited healing potential after being torn. The very high majority of meniscal tears will never heal unless they are surgically repaired. Meniscal tears associated with ACL injury are even less likely to heal without surgery, and I discuss this in more detail during the ACL education video on my website. Younger patients with a diagnosed acute meniscal tear should seek an opinion from an orthopaedic surgeon as soon as possible. The sooner our meniscal tear is repaired, the more likely it is the meniscus will heal. If a meniscal tear is left more than 6 to 12 weeks, it is much less likely it will heal, even if repaired. As we previously discussed, if a meniscus does not heal, it can have disastrous consequences for a young patient's knee. There's probably no more important operation that I do than repairing a young patient's torn meniscus. If we can get that meniscus to heal, it is a huge win for their knee health in the future. Even with surgical repair, not all meniscal tears will heal, but the chances of healing are greatly improved. If a meniscus heals after surgery, then you can expect an excellent result with no increased risk of arthritis. An acute meniscal tear is repaired with a keyhole surgery to your knee joint called an arthroscopy. We make two small incisions about five millimeters in size at the front of your knee joint. We then place a camera and some tools inside the knee and repair the meniscus back together with sutures. This stabilises the meniscus and helps it to heal. The same way that putting a broken bone into a cast keeps the bone stable so healing can occur. This is usually a day surgery procedure and you're able to walk on your knee immediately. Some patients may need to wear a brace for six weeks after surgery. If a meniscal tear does not heal, then you may require the torn component removed from your knee joint with an arthroscopy. Otherwise, it will continue to cause pain and mechanical symptoms of clicking and catching inside the joint. Some patients are confused by this and they worry that removing this meniscal tissue will increase their risk of arthritis. However, the torn area of meniscus is no longer working properly. It's like the ripped trampoline mat that we spoke about it can't absorb shock anymore. We only remove the torn fragments that are irritating the knee joint and are essentially useless anyway. Your surgeon should leave as much healthy meniscal tissue inside your knee as possible to continue working as a shock absorber. Removing just the torn component of a meniscus is called a partial meniscectomy. It's really important to understand that a patient's risk of arthritis is increased from the meniscal tear itself, not from the removal of the torn meniscal fragments. Many patients have asked me why we don't just replace the torn meniscus with a man-made implant. There have been several attempts to replace the function of a meniscus with an implant, but unfortunately nothing has even come close to doing the same job. The meniscus is a very humble but ingenious component within your knee joint. Because the results of meniscal repair are so time sensitive, I keep specific appointments available every week to see these patients rapidly. So I can generally see you and arrange surgery within a few days if required. If you haven't already had an x-ray or an MRI scan, then I can also arrange for that to occur prior to your appointment.
Degenerative meniscal tears are a very different kettle of fish than acute meniscal tears. These usually occur in more elderly patients whose knees are beginning to become arthritic. The meniscus is affected by arthritis and it begins to degenerate. Think of an old rug that gets walked on all the time. Eventually the threads begin to show and it wears out. A degenerative meniscus is the same and it's prone to tearing quite easily. You don't even need a specific injury for this tear to occur. Symptoms of a degenerative meniscal tear include pain and swelling, but they can also cause clicking, catching or locking within your knee. We call these mechanical symptoms because something is mechanically catching within the knee joint, like a loose screw inside a clock. These are caused by the torn meniscus grinding and grating between the knee bones. Symptoms may start suddenly after quite an innocuous incident, like getting up from kneeling in the garden, or they can also develop slowly over time. Now arthritis can also cause similar symptoms to a meniscal tear. Dull, achy pain that you feel even when you are not moving is most likely due to arthritis. Pain and mechanical symptoms associated with movement are much more likely to be caused by your meniscal tear. If you think you may have a degenerative meniscal tear, then I would suggest seeing your physiotherapist, GP or sports doctor and having them examine your knee. It is likely they'll obtain an x-ray to assist with your diagnosis and management. We get the best images from x-rays taken with you standing up, putting weight through the joint. If your x-ray and examination are consistent with some arthritis and a meniscal tear, then I would recommend a trial of non-operative management this may involve taking some anti-inflammatory medication if your doctor thinks it is safe for you to take this. You would also benefit from seeing a physiotherapist and there are a number of specific programs to help arthritic joints, such as the GLAD program. Some patients are carrying a few extra kilos of weight and if this is the case, then losing some weight may also assist your pain. Some degenerative meniscal tears will not improve over time and in this situation, an MRI scan may be helpful and surgery can be considered. Unlike an acute meniscal tear, where the tear occurs in a previously healthy meniscus, a degenerative meniscal tear can never heal, even with surgical repair. Think of somebody trying to repair a hole in a sock. If the sock is in otherwise good condition, the threads will hold and you can repair that tear and wear the sock again. But imagine if that sock was quite old and becoming to wear out. When you try and sew it back together, the threads will pull loose and you just won't be able to repair the hole in the sock. The exact same thing happens with a degenerate meniscal tear. The meniscus itself is so worn out that it can't be repaired back together and also it doesn't have the blood supply to heal itself. A keyhole operation or knee arthroscopy can remove the torn fragments of meniscus from inside the knee joint. This is performed through two small incisions about 5mm in size at the front of your knee joint. We can also remove loose pieces of articular cartilage that may have peeled off the bone due to arthritis and are also causing mechanical symptoms within the joint. This is usually done as a day surgery procedure and you can walk out of hospital the same day without crutches. The average patient needs one week off work and you can usually drive a car 24 hours after surgery. However, it is very important that patients understand that an arthroscopy cannot cure knee arthritis. But it can help with reducing the discomfort associated with mechanical symptoms of clicking, catching and locking. An analogy I often use with my patients is this. Imagine you are walking in an old, worn out pair of hiking boots. The tread has worn off the sole and your feet are sore. You also have a few pebbles inside the boots that are irritating. We can put a camera and some tools into your boots and remove those loose pebbles. Yes, this will make your walk more comfortable and take away some of the irritation as you move. But you are still walking around in the same pair of old boots. You may not feel perfect and over time the boots will continue to wear out. The only way of permanently fixing the problem is to change to a new pair of boots. A knee arthroscopy for a meniscal tear associated with arthritis is exactly the same principle. The problem is, replacing a pair of boots is a lot simpler than replacing your knee. Now every patient is different and one of the great challenges is deciding whether or not 
an arthroscopy is appropriate for them. Your options will essentially be physiotherapy, weight loss and anti-inflammatories, a knee arthroscopy or a knee replacement. It's for this reason that many patients do choose to have a knee arthroscopy. Arthroscopy is a small, minimally invasive procedure with few risks and a quick recovery, especially when compared to a knee replacement. If you're interested in learning more about non-operative management of arthritis or knee replacement, then I also have specific videos about these topics on my website. If you have very severe bone-on-bone -bone arthritis within your knee, then I would strongly recommend avoiding an arthroscopy altogether. Conclusive evidence shows that arthroscopy has poor results in these knees. If your symptoms are mainly mechanical, you don't have a badly arthritic knee and non-operative management isn't helping, then you may be a very reasonable candidate for an arthroscopy. And in this situation, an arthroscopy may help you significantly. At the end of the day, if the bulk of your symptoms are coming from arthritis and not a meniscal tear, then an arthroscopy won't help you. In this situation, if non-operative management fails, you may need to consider having a knee replacement. The Australian National Health and Medical Research Council describes total knee replacement as the most cost-effective and the most clinically effective for end-stage osteoarthritis in appropriate patients. Over 60,000 knee replacement surgeries are performed in Australia every year and the vast majority of these patients will have a successful outcome and a greatly improved quality of life. So the role of your orthopaedic surgeon is to really help you decide what is best for your knee. Is it non-operative management, a knee arthroscopy, or a total knee replacement? If you would like some specific advice about your meniscal injury, then I'd be more than happy to see you for a consultation. Remember, every patient is different so it's important that we look at your scans, examine your knee, and also talk about your symptoms and health history. If you haven't had appropriate scans, I can arrange for those to occur before I see you.